Welcome everyone to Ocean Cadence. As today, we will talk about the freshwater generator system available on board, which is useful for generating the drinking as well as the operational fresh water that is used on board a merchant as well as a passenger vessel. So let us start. On board a ship, fresh water serves multiple purposes. For instance, the fresh water is used for drinking, sanitary as well as sewage purposes and a part of it also goes to the galley and the other places. Moreover, this fresh water is also used in operational purposes, for example, the running of a boiler where the fresh water is the feed water and also in a number of machinery where it is not suggested to use sea water for operational reasons and fresh water serves the purpose, for example, purifier in the water lines that is the ceiling water and the similar lines and similar other places. So, with such multitude of utility, it is imperative that we have to store fresh water in ample quantity. But with the sea going vessels, it is not always possible to get convenient and frequent ports where we easily get fresh water due to transportation as well as cost reasons. In that case, it is the fresh water generator on board which is utilized to generate the drinkable fresh water and this fresh water so generated is meeting the standards of the sanitary and the domestic utility as well. So now let us understand how this piece of machinery works. First of all, like any other system, the fresh water generator also is basically nothing but a simple machinery that utilizes the concept of heating and cooling, which necessarily means that most of the fresh water generators, whether it is plate type construction or shell and tube type construction, rely basically on the philosophy of heat exchange. So let us see how this actually transpires within the system. In the system, we first use the seawater supply through the ejector pump. The ejector pump is the unit that provides the driving water to an air brine ejector. The purpose of this air brine ejector is to create and maintain the vacuum within the fresh water generator unit and keep it in that state continuously so that the operational constraints within the fresh water generator are met. Now why is this? Because when we are trying to separate the salts from sea water and convert it into fresh water and also separate the brine and the other sediments in case we have to boil the sea water or basically heat it the higher the pressure let's say atmospheric and above the more heat we require to boil or let's say heat up that water so when we create a state of vacuum within the unit what it does is it brings out that operational that is the boiling or the heating temperature within a certain operational range so this basically means that we can utilize the waste heat which is available for us on board and directly use it to perform the operational part within the freshwater generator and thus it is imperative for us to maintain the air brine ejector in a healthy state. From here the driving water will also enter the shell of the freshwater generator and create the upper half or the second half of the cycle where the cooling process takes place. But before that, we would want to understand the other components as well. In a fresh water generator, we use jacket water as the heating medium and thus there would be one inlet line and one outlet line which would be passing through the fresh water generator heater side. The cooling line would have a multi-pass structure and this line would then also lead to the feeding line of the fresh water generator system. Other important components within the fresh water generator structure would include the distillate pump which is used to draw and then further pump the fresh water that is being generated within this machinery. The salinity indicator which is used to give a local as well as a remote indication of the salinity of the fresh water that is being generated and also operates an alarm system that triggers a remote alarm in case the salinity goes too high. A flow meter on the outlet side of the fresh water generation system that helps us to keep a count or a tally of the quantity of the fresh water that is being generated. A vacuum breaker that would help us to draw as well as maintain vacuum and in certain places break the vacuum if there is too low pressure being created within the structure that can lead to probable damages. So now let us further understand the basic working of the system. As I told you already that the seawater is coming through the ejector and is circulating through the cooling circuit. Now this seawater is also further going to the feed side of the freshwater generator and from here it enters into the freshwater generator as the main feed that is the seawater feed. Keep in mind as it is the cooling water that is being used on the upper part in the second stage. So this 
water that is the sea water has already drawn a certain amount of heat from the cooling process and thus is not as cold or let's say in the state that it was drawn from the suction side this helps us in utilizing or further increasing the efficiency of our process by again utilizing the maximum amount of waste heat that we can within this system so now when the sea water is available over here the jacket water through a separate tube pass design would circulate through this system and once the sea water fills in and rises up through a tube design it would heat this water that means now when the vacuum state is maintained inside this structure this sea water as a virtue of the heat that it gains from this indirect heating of the jacket water system would then start evaporating and the vapor would rise up once the vapor rises up it passes through the demister and this is where the salt separation takes place so what happens is once the vapor rises up it will go near the condenser part and once it goes near the condenser part again this vapor would lose the heat which it had gained earlier over here to evaporate and then get converted back to water but now because the salt and the sediment separation has taken place within this system that means all the unnecessary elements of the sea water have been duly separated and the vapor has now converted into fresh water this fresh water is now available for us to draw and further circulate into the system and that is where the top part of the deflector structure would be handy so then it would collect the water so generated into the sides of the fresh water generator top structure from here it would be the suction line of the distillate pump through the top part that would help us to collect and draw the water further into the distillate pump and this distillate pump when running would further send this water through its system through the flow meter into the fresh water tanks that are available on board as we can see over here in some cases we can also use a bypass valve let's say to maintain the adequate flow or in certain cases also there would be a purging valve in the bypass line that would help us to remove any vapor that is being drawn if the fresh water generator is very early starting up or is running inconsistently due to choke tubes or other operational reasons over here what we can also see is that there is a overboard line that is shown the utility of this overboard line is that a part of the sea water that is being circulated is going to the feed but to maintain the back pressure or let's say the adequate quantity of flow into the system not all the water that is being drawn from the system would be utilized directly so what we have to do is we have to let go a certain quantity of this water to the overboard side and that is where the overboard walls and the overboard line come into play this overboard connection can sometimes also be into the feeding line or you can have a small valve over here that can be used for purging also so this might vary depending upon the design or the type of the fresh water generator that is available for you on board in most cases the overboard line is lined up in a way that the wall is more or less fully open so that there is no excessive back pressure created into the fresh water generator body and there is no damage to the tubes that occurs and as we already know that we need only a very minimal quantity of the sea water that is being circulated in this circuit for actually sending it as feed water into the system so the loop is more or less indirectly connected in the fresh water generator body we can also see that there would be a side glass which would be available for us to monitor whether the bubbling the evaporation as well as the generation of the fresh water is taking place adequately in the air brine or the ejector side we have this line that is coming from the bottom part of the top structure of the fresh water generator and this is the line which is helping the air brine ejector to draw the brine solution that is being collected as the waste solution in the lower part of the top structure and thus all of this goes from the air brine ejector and further circulates into the overboard side directly over here we can also see that it is this very air brine ejector which is actually helping us to create the vacuum how it does so is that basically due to the venturi effect when the water flows through it what it would do is it would create a low pressure area in the suction side of the air brine ejector that means 
the air barrier ejector would try to draw as much amount of flow from the other lines that are connected to its suction side. So it would draw the suction from the brine portion and it would also draw suction from the top line which would mean that all the air would get drawn in and the fresh water generator would be maintained in a state of vacuum as we had discussed earlier. Temperature gauges are present on the local as well as the remote places for us to monitor that by knowing the gradient of the jacket water temperature difference on the inlet and the outlet side we can get to know whether the fresh water generator is operating at optimum efficiency or not. Similarly, by checking the overboard operational side and checking the temperature over there, we can get to know that the water within the seawater circuit is circulating in an efficient way and the tubes are not choked and they are not dirty and they are drawing the necessary amount of it that they are supposed to and further exchanging it to the seawater. Pressure gauges would be available throughout the structure for us to maintain, let's say on the top of the shell or on the side of the shell and on the different lines for example the ejector pump side as well as the distillate pump side and these pressure gauges would have different utilities let's say on the fresh water generator it would help us to check and maintain the vacuum and on the ejector pump and the distillate pump it would help us to know that the seawater feed as well as the fresh water drawn is always at a positive pressure and that means the line is not drawing air and there is no chance of malfunction. The salinity indicator would have a probe connected on the discharge side of the distillate pump and this probe would sense the salinity and give local as well as remote alarms. Dosing units can be present on two sides. One is the seawater side where the chemicals for the treatment of the feed water are dosed and on the fresh water side where the final dosage of the chemical takes place for us to maintain the necessary minerals and the water in a healthy state for drinking and sanitary purposes as well. I hope that a detailed explanation helps you in understanding the exact working of the fresh water generator and if you still have any further questions please feel free to drop into the comment section and let us know. Please do make sure to share our videos with your colleagues and subscribe to our channel and help us grow together. Thank you.